The Barber International Wax Cotton Jacket holds iconic status amongst the classic and modern classic motorcycle riding fraternity. It is a true classic. Barber in 1936 introduced its first more settling range of clothing and this continued until 1977. The Barber wax cotton became the staple riding gear for 97% of riders in the 1957 six day trial event. Actually Steve McQueen himself wore an international in the 1960s. These days though the international cannot legally be called a motorcycle jacket. That's because it is not CE approved. It can only be called motorcycle inspired. Sadly, Barber abandoned its motorcycle routes in 1977, and this is where Bell Staff took up the lead and subsequently triumphed in this market. The original jacket continues to be made to this day, though, okay, there's no armour. And the 8 ounce Ali Stevenson wax con will only provide limited slide protection. But it's still a fantastic jacket and it's a favourite amongst classic motorcycle riders. I had to spend some time with the jacket to understand the appeal of this jacket and why. But first, let's have a look at the jacket. Now, this is my own personal jacket. It's the Jack Special Edition version of the iconic International. There are a few subtle differences over the standard jacket. For example, the standard jacket has a check lining, while the, on the Jack it's black. The badging is slightly different also, there's a skull and crossbones on one side, and the collar is suede instead of cord. And on the jack, the buttons are black, and the zip is silver, as opposed to a brass finish and a gold zip. Now the international jacket is made from heavyweight 8 ounce silk coil wax. The belt is reversible with the reflective side and a non-reflective side for night riding. I like the barber badging. This special edition has a skull and crossbones. There are two breast pockets and two lower pockets. All pockets are protected by storm flaps. On closer inspection, the jacket looks really well made. The stitching and buttons are excellent quality, with Barber International etching written on them. There is an inside breast pocket. The quality of the wax cotton is excellent. The storm cuffs are buttoned and the collar is lined and fastens with a bottle to keep out the wind and rain. The zip is a strong YKK zip and branded for barber. The lower pockets on the jack also have side access, but I'm going to be honest, the jack special edition is around about £80 difference and more if you don't get a discount. So if these features are not important to you, stay with the original jacket and save yourself a few quid. So okay, it's a great jacket, but I have to say, would you wear it on a bike? What purpose does it serve if it's not got any armour? Well, that was my sentiment exactly, until, that is, I spent some time with the jacket and then I compared it with the Bellstaff Trialmaster. Please see my review of the Trialmaster. I will leave a link in the description below and at the end of this video. Now, unlike the Trialmaster, the jacket isn't too bulky and that's why it's useful. I will explain. This jacket was a choice of jacket for the Tunnel Boys, the Cafe Racer Boys of the 50s and 60s because it could be folded and carried with them while out and about. And if the weather changed, while out and racing around the North Circular towards the next cafe or on a trip down to Brighton, the wax cotton could be thrown over a leather jacket. This got me to thinking. Now I like riding in a lighter jacket and venture jacket when it's warm, but if I set up for a ride in the early morning when I like to ride, it can be chilly. So throwing a jacket over the top of a lighter jacket that already has protection is useful 
and is probably the way to go. The people at Knox Armour have been shouting about this for years. You can wear armoured shirt or jacket and if the weather changes, throw over a warmer coat or wax con to keep you warm and dry. Now this has happened to me when I've gone out in the morning or on an hot afternoon and I've come back in the late evening when the sun has set and I've been absolutely freezing in a vented jacket. My vented jacket of choice for riding in the summer is a Revit Vigo. I will leave a link in the description for a review I did some time ago. I also like the new Revit Eclipse, which is also excellent and I will be reviewing this shortly. Anyway, this vented jacket is useful for wearing under my Barber International. And when I feel cold, or there is a chance of getting wet, I can just throw over the Barber International. The jacket is not bulky, so it can be folded and placed in a pannier or a backpack. And this is its strength because it makes this jacket so versatile. The sceptical amongst you would think this jacket doesn't fold small enough, as it is, after all, an eight house lined wax cotton jacket. But it's easy to fold, and it fits nicely into my 25 litre backpack, and there's room for other things as well. Now some would say, why not just fold a waterproof jacket and put that in the backpack instead? Well, two reasons. First reason, most waterproof jackets will not keep you warm. And secondly, they certainly won't look the part on a modern classic bike, flapping around in the wing like a dishevelled flag. The wax cotton is a well tried and tested piece of kit that looks the part on a modern classic. It will keep you warm and it will keep you dry. Now 8 ounces is a good weight of cotton. 10 ounce is probably more for autumn or winter or early spring and feels a bit bulkier, while 6 ounce I feel is a bit too light for my taste. 8 ounce is a good mix. It's great for spring and summer riding, it will keep you warm and dry when you want it and as I've said it folds away nicely without being too bulky. So what's the jacket like on the bike? Well the zip is made so the bottom can be splayed when sat across the bike. It's a naturally shorter zip. The jacket feels comfortable. While riding, the jacket doesn't feel restrictive or uncomfortable, especially when wore over a protective layer underneath. I'm impressed. Now today, it's early morning, it's 14 degrees and it's just too cold for just a light jacket. Well, Later the forecast is for 20 degrees, so this is when I will remove the Barber International and just pop it into my backpack or strap it to the seat of my bike. Now instantly I'm feeling the jacket is keeping away the wind chill and cool air, so I feel nice and comfortable. The sleeves are a nice enough length to wear gloves. I do really like this jacket. Wearing a protective base layer and then a wax cotton is certainly the way to go in the spring and summer months. In the winter and autumn I will probably just wear my Bellstaff Trialmaster. It's a bit heavier and better lined than the Barber International and of course as Ghost D3 or Armour the standard. But the Barber has its place in spring and summer so I'm sold on it. Now sizing for this jacket I went for a large. I'm a 43 chest and I find the protective jacket I like to wear fits comfortably underneath. Sizing is pretty good from Barber. Now, price. Well, it's less than half the price of a trial master at £250, but it can be had for £170 in country attire and also in the sales. So I think it's a bargain versatile jacket. Especially if you like riding a classic or modern classic motorcycle. I'm really sold on this layering concept wearing a protective base layer for spring, summer and then adding another layer if you need it is, is so obvious and is quite practical. Anyway, I hope you like this review. Please support the channel by subscribing and if you really like the review you can always support the channel further by buying me a coffee for a pound on my buy me a coffee page. Anyway, in the meantime, ride safe, enjoy life, BFN and bye for now.